I wanted to, to mention there are three, I've got stories from three states, and plus there's a lot of talk on the national level about an upcoming general strike by immigrants in this country. Now, we'd be talking about illegal immigrants who are being asked to do this. I guess if an illegal immigrant didn't show up for work, see, I think they'd be the last people to to actually take anybody up on us saying, the reason they're here is because they came, a lot of them, uh, even if they came here illegally, they came here thinking they're going to make some money. And then to tell them, ah, yeah, you know, you shouldn't go to work today. I don't think it's going to work. 843, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. We've just bounced up to 37 on our way into the mid 40s today. Some temperatures in the 50s next week. Woohoo! Uh, well, unless, of course, you're worried about runoff from the mountains, but that's going to happen sooner or later. Uh, just a quick note. I wanted to, uh, to mention my friends at Waddell and Reed uh, who, have been, uh, who have been working in the investment business now for 80 years, since 1937. Waddell and Reed is one of the oldest firms to offer mutual funds. Now, you can find the office here in Twin Falls, of course, too. Waddell and Reed owns and, uh, owns and manages two mutual fund families, and they, they do this by a conservative nature. These are people who know what they're doing is evidenced by eight decades in business. But Ellen Reed takes a planning approach, and they'll look at each piece of the puzzle you may have and help you build proper expectations. But Ellen Reed builds plans around your goals and your needs. They help people manage money, and at Waddell and Reed, they take planning personally. 844 now, and I bring this story up about a, a, a general strike by illegal immigrants, but it's going on against a backdrop. You just wonder if the country is coming completely unglued. In fact, I'm going to share with you the economist Harry Dent, who I've been, I get his daily emails. I've subscribed to them and I've been reading him for years. He is predicting some, some very, very dire times ahead for this country. I'll share that in the next hour. But this is a, this is a Unitarian minister from Denver, Colorado, bragging to reporters about hiding an illegal immigrant in his church. It is absolutely unconscionable that we would take this woman who has been in this country for almost two decades, who has three small children who are American citizens, and literally rip her out of her community. But, but what if there are millions of these people? What should we do with them? Should we tell everybody who managed to hop the fence that they can stay? And isn't that an invitation to 7 billion people around the world to come here? And could we afford that? I mean, at what point, you know, just think this through. At what point does this become overbearing? And, you know, being compassionate is one thing. Next time I'm at church, I'll drop a little money into the, into the, to the basket to, to help these people out. There, there are people already who are working charities all over the world to help people in their own countries. This notion that they all have to come here, uh, I, I'm sorry, but you're only encouraging more law-breaking when you do this. Meanwhile, there was a hot meeting in, uh, and it's hot in Phoenix anyway, but Phoenix, Arizona, Last night, the city council rejected a bill that would have named Phoenix a sanctuary city. And here are a couple of people talking in support of sanctuary and a third saying, hey, good riddance. You have confused my mother. You have increased the trauma and anxiety in my home and the homes across the city of Phoenix by saying that you are going to stand up to Trump and you have not done so. There's no more time to lose. The civil rights era left us with so many truths one was that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And that's really good news in that we can't help but believe that our labor will not be in vain, that the city will change as we work and endure and march and teach and do good. I suggest that we uh, vote against Phoenix becoming a sanctuary city. Our property values will plummet. Our crime rate will rise. And our visitors that come here every winter will not come here anymore. So I am against it becoming a sanctuary city. I suggest that those who want to live in a sanctuary city move to San Francisco. Did you hear the woman talking about the arc of justice? Well, what's your definition of justice? Because apparently you think it's everybody else's, but it may not. If justice is just opening the borders and saying, all right, y'all come here. I, I don't. See, justice means if you go to court and you've been falsely accused and they let you go afterward, then that's justice, right? On the other hand, if you've gone and you've slaughtered your neighbors and they take you to court, they convict you and send you off to the death house, that is justice. But this notion that we just eliminate borders so we can bring more Democrat voters here, 
I'm sorry, but that's uh, that's not how I define justice. We have a caller with us at 847. Caller, you're up next, and you're on KLIX. Good morning, Bill. You know, I, I just love all this hypocritical stuff. They like reciting laws as long as the laws seem to be in their favor. But they want to reward law breakers. And and that's, that's just not right. I mean, I've had conversations with a few people that are just panicked. And I asked them, I said, do you have a legal green card? And I say a legal one, not one that you bought in the back room of, of uh, Joe's Bar and Grill. You know, I said, if you got one from behind Joe's Bar and Grill, that's a felony. But if you have a legal green card and the paperwork to go with it, then you got nothing to worry about. But if you're breaking the law, then I want to know how come you can get away with breaking the laws, but we can't. We are the citizens of this country. And until they can answer that question logically, they have no grounds, period. Well, and, and logic is the, uh, the, the key phrase there. I mentioned justice a few minutes ago. Uh, logically, this notion that you're going to be able to take care of everybody around the world on the American taxpayer's dime, and I thank you for the call, seems to me to be a little bit ri- ridiculous. Thomas Edsel, who's a liberal columnist at the New York Times, and I mean he's very liberal, at a very liberal newspaper, has a column I printed out today. It's eight pages long. And Edsel says this is costing the Democrat Party. And he, he, he hates to admit this, but he's gone through some of the research from last year's election, and he's discovered by going through it that Hillary Clinton may well have lost Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Florida on the immigration issue. Why, as it turns out, African Americans in the Democrat Party don't want the competition for jobs. We just heard last week that uh, Democrats who've been reading all these letters, they're trying to read these letters from Coretta Scott King into the record in Congress, uh, that she had also written a letter 25 years ago saying, hey, this is not good for, for legal Latin workers or you know Latin citizens of this country, native-born citizens and African Americans, to have all these people coming here and competing with them for work. That gets ignored. Well, it turns out that in the black community in this country, they were annoyed to no end by Hillary Clinton talking about opening the floodgates. Because if you want a job and suddenly they say, hey, you know, I got Esteban over here. He'll do it for half the cost. Now, you'd be angry, too. And then here's the other part of this. Media likes to portray the Latino community as one great big monolith. But... Raul Labrador, born in Puerto Rico, that's United States territory. He was born a United States citizen. Joined us in the previous half hour of this program. You know, he's, a, he's an American and a good American and a hardworking American, obviously. And then you have people like my old neighbor, Jose Mazan, who was, a, who was a refugee from Cuba. His family fled after the communists took control. And his dad was opposed to Castro. Now, I've, I've got to tell you, He's a very conservative Republican, much more so than I am. These people don't go along with this. And the other part of this is, if you look at people whose families have been in Texas for three, 400 years, or who've been in Arizona, California, New Mexico for three or 400 years, and uh, they are Latino, but they were here before the United States existed. They are obviously Americans. Do you think they want someone crossing the border and competing with them for their jobs? Of course not. I don't sit here. I have ancestors who came from Ireland, uh, Germany, and uh, and Scotland. And I'm not beating the drum to allow all of those people into this country if they'd like to come here, especially if they'd like to take my job away. 851, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 37 on our program. This is, a, this is a liberal member of the House of, uh, no, I think he's a state senator, state senator in Massachusetts. And this guy was talking to the media last night, and uh, he is trying to uh, make the claim. I just, again, it, it just shows you that the madness of what we're dealing with. But once again, he's saying, well, you know, we need to stand up to Donald Trump. There hasn't been uh, a so-called Muslim registry, but certainly I would argue there's been limitations on Muslims being able to come into this country. There are all types of federal funds that come in through education laws, environment, transportation bonds, and I don't think the president can just, with a wave of his hand, limit that federal money.
Now, what is he saying? How is that related to illegal immigrants from perhaps south of the border? He is proposing that his state become a sanctuary state, not just for the Latinos who are here illegally, or anyone else who might be here from, I don't know, Singapore or China or Japan or Canada illegally, but as well refugees. Now, it won't go through his, his state's governor. His state's governor is a Republican. It's a fellow named Baker. He will veto any such bill. But again, it shows you the mindset across the country that these people are dealing with. And you've got entire states now that are threatening to secede from the Union. Here's the thing, though, about Massachusetts. Boston may go, but Pittsfield, Massachusetts may say, hey, I don't want anything to do with you. And Holyoke and Lowell, these old working class towns, may say the same thing. These people are also opposed to opening the borders, just like voters were in Pennsylvania and the other old Rust Belt states around the country, just like voters in Northern California and out in the, uh, the, 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 uh, the agricultural areas of California aren't on board with Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Oakland. Yet, the liberals think that everybody out there is on the same page with them, and if you're not, you're just a big, big old meanie. This is Tanya J. Powers with Fox News, and she's reporting on this Day Without Immigrants. It's being called a Day Without Immigrants, and organizers say the purpose is to show how critical immigrants are to the U.S. economy. They're urging immigrants not to attend work, open their businesses, spend money, or even send their kids to school. The move is a response to President Donald Trump's new policies, including a pledge to increase deportation of immigrants living in the country illegally, build a wall along the Mexican border, and ban people from certain majority Muslim countries from coming to the U.S. Those behind the Day Without Immigrants say actions are planned in cities including New York, Washington, Austin, Texas, and Philadelphia. In New York City, Tanya J. Powers, Fox News. All right, take the day off. I'll go shop somewhere else. We have a caller with us. Caller, you're up next on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Hey, I had two points I wanted to raise on this immigration issue. First, if we open our borders and allow everyone to come in to the U.S. that wants to, how are we going to keep our country? from being any different than the country from which they came. And second, on this uh, oh, this boycott of work or strike, whatever you want to call it, um, if, if that's supposed to indicate what our economy would be like without immigrants, shouldn't they rather quit paying them any money for, say, food stamps or any any other sorts of health care, anything like that, to see what our economy would truly be like without. Oh, my goodness. We'd be, we'd, be, we'd be saving so much tax money that, uh, yeah, I think that's a wonderful point to be made because a lot of these people are sucking up social services quicker than I sucked up a glass of milk when I was uh, eight years old. Thank you much for the call. It's 855. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I was going to make a joke about a Hoover vacuum cleaner there, but I did. I, I thought maybe the milk analogy, all of you who are eight years old at one time might know that one a little bit better. I, I got to tell you, let them walk. Let them take the day off. I, first of all, I don't think a lot of them will because I don't think a lot of them can afford it. And if you are here illegally, uh, the legal immigrants who take the day off, if they can afford it, huh, God bless them. Uh, as I say, I'll shop somewhere else. Number two, the illegal immigrants, I don't think dare call attention to the fact that they're here and breaking the law. About 90 seconds before the break, you're up next. You're on Top Story. Hi, Bill. Bill, Obama invited these young illegals to come into our country, and when these kids get trained, they will have the jobs that should have gone to the Americans for the next 50 years. He's cheated, cheated a lot of worthwhile American citizens that are unemployed, that are citizens, in favor of the illegals. He has screwed our people out of 50 years of jobs. I think that's well said. I, I, I just was reading yesterday where one writer in the Washington Times was celebrating the ascendancy of the Republican Party across the country, but over at the conservative Washington Examiner. They're both conservative publications. Uh, the second writer was saying, don't, uh, you know, pride go up before a fall. Be careful here because young millennials, they don't like the Republican Party. And they're not moving in the direction of the Republican Party. Why? Because the Republican Party is one of the last institutions in this country that still says no. 
It's like I was talking the other day about being over at Smith's doing my grocery shopping the other day, and I was standing at the checkout, and in the next aisle there was a little girl. She was kicking her feet, screaming and crying in her mom's grocery cart because she couldn't get to the, reach the candy in the aisle, and mom said, no. You young millennials, they, they have this sense of entitlement. They don't know what no always means or they don't like it. Well, let's appeal to them and say, tell you what, you're all working over there at the shoe store saying, may I help you? If you want to get into another line of work before you're 50, tell you what, go with the Republican Party, go with Donald Trump's mission, and we'll ensure that nobody competes with you for those other jobs. 858, Bill Colley on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. One more hour of our program is coming up. Oh, the liberals are out of control. Economist Harry Dent says we may be looking at a, a civil war on the way in this country. I have some details on that coming up in the next hour. Hope you can stick around. Fox News, though, first. <laughs> 